Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather here. And it looks to me like we've got another three to four ripples or uh, low pressures lined up on this uh, Pineapple Express before it uh, fades into oblivion at this point. But it looks like that'll go through probably 115, 116, and then it's really going to fade after that. But the biggest impacts haven't changed. California, Washington, Oregon, British Columbia. And there will be snow in the interior as well. Um, some nice totals, not as much as what they're going to get on the West Coast. But uh, the Sierra snow levels, another um, issue that I'm going to talk about in this uh, update. I want to take you into Colorado. We had some snow sliding through here the last 24 hours. Steamboat reporting 8 to 9 inches of new snow. I'm sure that's going to be an outstanding day up there in the northern mountains of Colorado. Um, Loveland area, Loveland Ski Area reporting uh, 4 to 5 inches of new snow up there. And uh, temperatures in the teens this morning. You see some of the cameras. Everybody uh, already up on the hill at uh, 8.30. Um, so I actually, um, I have this infrared. This is water vapor this morning. You can see the uh, the lime green pineapple express flow on water vapor and the three lows lined up that I think will deliver the bulk of the moisture through 115, 116, extending all the way back into the North Pacific there. Now, I did uh, just publish this uh, blog post, three to four more atmospheric river surges to go and I also looked at snow totals so take a look at that it looks to me like the best accumulation in the Sierra will be above 7,000 you'll probably still get some accumulation below seven but I think with the um, the nature of this especially once we get into one nine really the snow levels go up even another notch on one nine but uh, generally above 7,000 that's where we're going to see um, the best accumulation so they're running high on um, the forecast pattern let me go into the forecast pattern. I'll take this full. So this is the jet on 1.9. This is probably the biggest next, the next biggest ripple in the flow or surge of atmospheric river moisture. You can see the deep trough. It'll really throw a lot of moisture into California right up against the Sierra with this and some ridging in the jet in the interior. So the most consolidation is going to be on the west coast with this. Um, you can see the jet behind it is still powerful. In fact, here's the jet on 1.16. Um, so at this point, the, the atmospheric river contribution is really fading and weak. Um, you can see the jet splitting off into the, uh, it's splitting in the Pacific, and there's a big trough um, on the north side of it, getting ready to move into uh, the Pacific Northwest. So uh, things are definitely different in the jet once we get to about 115 and 116. All right, let's go back to the blog here. Again, ChrisTomer.com. Uh, this is where the blog is located. There's timing. Let me show you this. Forecast, radar, and satellite. There's Sunday morning at 6. Here comes the next surge into California. Kind of fades. Fights that ridge in the interior. Now, the one on 19110 is much bigger. And it does spill into the interior with snow. It makes it. And here's Thursday morning. Um, here's Thursday afternoon, Thursday night. You can see most of the action is along the west coast and Pacific Northwest. So um, there's really only one wave that survives the ridging stress in the jet of the interior. Here we go, I'll show it to you again. So notice how this surge on 178, it kind of fades as it hits the interior. The one on 19, 110 makes it because it's, it's bigger. And there it goes into the interior. Uh, here's Thursday, and again, this is uh, probably the third surge, and it's really the west coast and the Pacific Northwest. Um, so let's go into some of the totals here. I'll show you what I'm thinking. Um, here is 1.7. So all of today through 1.9, you can see where the big numbers are. Uh, it's all West Coast, Pacific Northwest, and certainly California with 2 to 3, maybe 4 feet in some of those areas. Now in Mount Shasta, you're already starting to catch the next big wave on 1.9 with that 62. So uh, only light stuff in the interior. Sun Valley seems to have the right flow at about 11. Um, here's the second uh, period. So this is 110 through 116, much bigger numbers across the board. In California, another 35 to 50. So if you do the math, here's the first period, two feet in Heavenly, Kirkwood, Palisades, Tahoe, in the first period, plus 46. Um, you're looking at 60 to 70 inches of uh, snowfall around the Tahoe area above 7,000. Uh, Mammoth Mountain, between the first and the second period, you're looking at 46, another 50, I mean 90 plus. <laughs> That's unbelievable. 90 plus. Uh, Shasta's also up around 90 plus. Uh, and I, I'm still worried about catastrophic flooding. I mean, we've seen it. We still have to add 
inches and inches of more of additional rainfall in the valleys of northern California with this thing. It's like a fire hose just shooting into the west coast of California. Um, also in the second period, Colorado picks up another, I don't know, 4 to 12, another foot in the Wasatch, another foot up in the Tetons, which is outstanding. Brundage to Sun Valley do very well. Interior BC, Revelstoke, Red Mountain, 7 to 9 inches, but much less much less through both periods, actually. Here's the first period, much less through Banff. You can see it's just a few inches. Um, let's go into the northeast. 1.7 through 1.16 really don't have much here. Um, and it's all northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine. Um, a lot of it's going to end up being rain. I have a feeling through, this, through, the, uh, through the northeast before it changes over to snow. So just not a ton there. Really, the, uh, the hot spot is out here. It's in the west, guys. Thanks for tuning in here on this update. Have a great weekend.